I've got some unboxing to do, but I'm annoyed. I bought these wax worms just before we went into lockdown in the UK again, thinking, yeah, I'm going to be clever. I'm going to stock up just in case. But they've already started to pupate. Bit annoying. There's a few little guys still worming around in there. I don't know what I'll do with these. I guess we'll see if they turn into wax moths. I guess is what they turn into. Okay, let's get unboxing. This seems like a really big box for what I've ordered. So I'm interested to see what's going on here. There was a bit of a problem with the delivery. They didn't have the animals that I wanted. So I did get something else instead from Spider Shop UK. Wow, it's like past the parcel. All right, so the first thing I've got isn't actually for me, it's a present for my niece. It's a giant Asian mantis, Hirudula membranacea. I took some round their house just to show my own Asian mantis to her. And she was really fascinated by it and then decided she wanted one, so I'll get that for her birthday. It's, I think they make awesome pets for kids because they are really fascinating, and especially mantids. They're obviously a bit more active and a bit more interesting to watch than some other bugs and this is an ideal starter mantis as well and she wanted a green one so it looks like it's a boy possibly looking very skinny so that's what i'm going to go with boy this one looks quite pale too i'm going to leave her in there for now or him in here for now i've also got some dubias um mainly because I wanted some more stuff to feed, some variety, but these are a lot bigger than I thought they would be, to be honest, so I don't know what I'm going to do with these. I might just keep them, yeah, see if I can get a colony going or something. And then this is what I swapped <coughs> my order out for. I did want to get some dragon millipedes and a few scorplings, but unfortunately they didn't have any in stock, or they ran out of stock. Um, so the guy kindly rang me and said, look, I can give you some credit if you want to order something else. Had a look around and thought, hey, do you know what? Let's go for a grammar stola pulchra. Um, these guys just look so wicked when they're big and black and velvety. So it's definitely something on my list that I've wanted for a while. Um, two, three centimetres, so it shouldn't be too big. And... I'm going to get a little enclosure set up and ready to pop this guy in. I've got plenty of these, which should be more than enough for a while to keep him housed. Annoyingly, I lost the footage for my rehousing of the Gramostola pulchra, so I will put some pictures up now as you see them, just to show what kind of design I ended up going for. The enclosure might be a bit big for the size of the tarantula, but I've given it plenty of digging medium because I believe that they are a burrowing species, or they like to have room to burrow as such, even though they're a terrestrial species. So hopefully this will be a good home for the foreseeable future. So I just had a bit of a scare with the milky bar kid. Uh, she seemed to be, well, she was okay this morning and then I've noticed well a little while ago that she'd molted on the side here as you can see she left her exuvium on the side um, and I found her kind of laying in this in this grass area here probably going to have to take that out because it seemed like she must have dropped or fell and then kind of got a bit stuck in here so I was like oh god here we go she's probably got all mangled limbs now but I did get her out, and she seems all right, just a bit, I don't know, a bit weak. I mean, she can't have been laying there very long, because I checked on her earlier, and she was fine. But the, I kind of got her out and tried to get her to perch somewhere. Um, and her back legs, I don't know, she seemed like she was kind of struggling to grip on with her back legs, like didn't have much strength. So... Uh, but I've managed to get her out of where she was laying and then perched her up on here. Thankfully her legs look okay, they didn't look twisted and no limb distorted or anything like that. Uh, so I guess we'll see how it is because she's very freshly molted, which is my only worry. Um, 
So I'm hoping that she, if she just lays there and hardens up a bit, she'll be all right. And I'd kind of like her to be on the top part so she has a bit of a better grip, but I'll keep a close eye on her and hopefully she'll be okay, but a bit of a scare there. Um, I think that's the only disadvantage really with having these kind of more exuberant tanks is there's a bit of a danger if they do drop when they molt like that but we'll see I think I might give her some honey if she'll take it just to boost their energy a bit and then um, keep an eye on her and check up in a bit. My Idolamantis Diabolica she's now so she's managed to get to the top of the cage I did give her a bit of a hand because I wanted her to just get in a good spot. As you can see the her legs are a bit bent. There is some disfigurement. Um, but she's managing to hold on to the top now. So I guess we'll see how it goes. I'm not too optimistic. Uh, but she's got to that point now. And she's not really moved though all day. So I'm just going to leave her to it. And we'll try hand feeding her if needs be. See if she can get through to the next molt. I've ordered a fully netted cage because I just think, you know, I, I do like having the, whilst I like having these enclosures looking a bit more aesthetically pleasing, maybe it isn't the best for these guys, they are so delicate. So uh, I've ordered that netting enclosure and I'll pop her in that just so if she does drop she will find it a little bit easier to find her feet again because I think that was the problem. From looking at the molt, which is already in, still in there, she molted absolutely fine. So she must have uh, dropped after the molt. I know it's on the ground at the moment, but it was up here on the side of the enclosure. So she got out fine and must have fallen afterwards and then uh, just couldn't get back up, I guess. Um, and obviously they're very vulnerable as soon as they've just molted anyway. So, But we'll see. She's, you know, I'm glad that she's... Uh, at the top of the enclosure again and seems to be able to use some of those legs even though they are a bit uh, disfigured. I guess the main thing is just if she's able to eat which I will try in a few days um, see if she can eat because I did notice her tarsus as well is a little bent don't know if you can see it I mean her arms are fine but just one of the tarsus is uh, seems to be a bit disfigured too shame but we will see fingers crossed and the last thing I wanted to talk about was my main man Milton who finally reached maturity and got his wings and just look at how impressive he is what an absolute beast and look at the size of his antenna all for the ladies very impressive Milton these guys just look absolutely wild when they reach maturity. It looks like he's got some kind of long cape on. It's so cool. He's always been so well behaved as well. So yeah, I'm really happy he made it. I mean, ghost mantids are... They're pretty easy to get to maturity. So I didn't think we would have any problems. But uh, he's always been one of my faves. So I'm really happy he's finally made it. I'd be really keen to breed him. Uh, but unfortunately I don't have any mature female ghost mantis at the moment so you'll have to live a life of celibacy Milton I'm afraid I don't think you'll mind but on that note we do also have the Milton Massive who are all thriving no casualties yet the door broke so I had to make a quick fix on it for now but yeah these guys are all doing really well to. I think all of them have molted now so I'm going to probably move them on to eating green bottles which is much easier than trying to manage fruit flies in there. So aside from Milky Bar Kid everyone's looking good but we will move Milky Bar Kid out and probably move this guy in there because he is an Empressid as well so his enclosure uh, it really isn't ideal at the moment. Blepharopsis mendica, so I'll probably move him into this one. My netted enclosure arrived, and I have rehoused the Milky Bar Kid, Idolamantis diabolica. So this enclosure isn't the best looking. 
I just wanted to have something really, really basic, which is probably what I should have done in the first place, to tell the truth. She's looking good already. She's quite happy up there. I've kept the tank with not very much in it. It's not the prettiest at all. It's just got really bare bone stuff in there. I've put some plants in there. I don't know if they'll grow, but I just wanted something where if she does molt or if she does fall, we're not gonna have the same issues where she gets stuck on terrain and things in the, at the bottom of the tank, which was the problem before. So it's really minimal now. If she drops, she should be able to right herself and climb back up. So this might be a better enclosure. It's a shame that um, obviously with her being in here, it's not the best for viewing, but it's best for her all round and that's, that is the main thing. I've got a heat mat at the back there, which you can kind of see. There's loads of ventilation here, even more than before. Um, so I'm hoping she'll thrive just as well as she did in the other one. Um, obviously without the issues of dropping, which was the main problem. And it's also freed up her old tank. So I have put my Blepharopsis mendica in here. He is also an empicid, which means he could do with some better grippage on the sides of the tank, which is definitely an advantage for him. He's really small though, so he is a bit small for this tank, but um, he should be okay. He's a pretty fearsome guy, so I think he'll hunt his food all right. Any problems, I can always hand feed him. I mean, now that she's uh, kind of hardened up and had a bit of time to recover, you can see that she's got a lot more brown coloration to her. And... On closer inspection, the only issue really, oh, hello. The only issue is the leg, which you can kind of see there's a kink in it. Other than that, now she actually seems all right. So I think she'll be all right. I mean, hopefully that leg will sort itself out on her next mould and we can see her through to adulthood, which would be brilliant. These, these guys are notorious for getting uh, for having problems and not reaching adulthood, so that would be a great thing to see if we can if we can get her there. So fingers crossed, she's on the road to recovery. But thanks for watching, guys. If you like what you see, drop a subscribe, pop a like on there, and I'll see you next time.